part three by Alana Moore from Geomantica. My studies of permaculture design began in 1986. It led me to combine a love of growing food with my geomantic work of cultivating the harmony of place. Bill Morrison, the originator, awarded me three diplomas of permaculture in 1994. A sustainable living system that he and David Holmgren developed in Australia in the 1970s, permaculture design utilizes inherent site energies. I call my approach sensitive permaculture as it addresses the subtle qualities and energies of place. An example of subtle energies that can be harnessed is lunar energy and planting. You plant when the moon is waxing, but not root crops. At full time, full moon time, only cultivate soil and do liquid fertilizing. Plant root crops just before the new moon and never plant during an eclipse. Trees have a complex energy anatomy as glimpsed in this painting of a tree and its spirit observed by a clairvoyant theosophist Geoffrey Hodson from his book Kingdom of the Gods. When we tune into the subtle aspects of plants and provide their preferred energetic requirements we can enhance plant growth, health and produce. Some plants can be very sensitive to strong energies and grow strangely in high energy zones, such as these coiled palms in North Queensland, Australia, that are affected by powerful geovortex energy. We need to avoid planting in such zones if our gardens have them, to live in harmony with the land and spirits of place before doing anything. A geomantic land survey is a must for getting to know the place. This is usually done by dowsing, either on-site or remotely via a map, as I prefer to do. People and animals can also get sick if they sleep in high energy zones and especially at energy line crossings. These are known as geopathic zones. In Germany, the bed below would be called a cancer bed, cancer being a possible outcome to sleeping there. Geobiologists, building biologists and dowsers have, have to deal with this issue a lot. A sensitive approach to permaculture involves listening to the land and respecting nature, discovering the enchantment of one's locality, considering ge geobiology when designing sites, balancing building biology with energy efficiency in the home, practicing sacred custodianship of the land, cultivating good energy. Many trees in Ireland are associated with fairies, especially hawthorns. Often called lone or fairy trees, they are left to grow in farm fields to keep the fairies happy. Across Asia, spirit houses are popular in gardens and people aim to keep the nature spirits happy with regular offerings of fruit and incense. Dowsing with a pendulum is a great way to discover the invisible influences in one's garden to test for energies and qualities such as seed viability. When working to stimulate or harmonise site energies, I always pre-check and measure the outcomes this way. Firstly, I defer to the spirit of place for permission 
my pendulum's clockwise and anti-clockwise rotations indicating a yes or no response. This is the Giant's Causeway, a World Heritage listed volcanic landscape on Ireland's north coast with huge mythic value. The rocks are basalt, my favourite stone for enhancing site energies. The Giant's Causeway has great examples of basalt columns that form as lava cools at certain temperatures underground. Crushed basalt rock is fantastic for soul remineralization, supplying many minerals and trace elements. Only found in volcanic areas, it's now sold commercially and can be bought online by the bagful. In Victoria, I could drive to the quarry for a trailer load. Paramagnetism Professor Phil Callahan gave the world a new angle on the value of stones. He discovered that paramagnetism, a very weak attraction to a magnet, enhances plant growth naturally. Paramagnetic rock, such as basalt, increases soil magnetism when crushed and incorporated into it. This stimulates microbial activity. They feast on the minerals and the soil fertility grows. Callahan had investigated Ireland's unique thousand odd year old round towers and realized that they acted as antennas for collecting atmospheric magnetism. Smaller versions of the Irish towers, known as power towers, have pro proven to be good energy boosters in farms and gardens worldwide. I was inspired from meeting Callaghan in 1993 to make power towers across Australasia. Also called paramagnetic antennas, these columns of paramagnetic rock generate beneficial energy fields that have brought all sorts of improvements to farms and gardens. The fairies love them too. In Malaysia, where a pawpaw tree would normally have only one trunk and no branches, this power tower has had an obvious effect. A power tower in a sacred corner of Telopea Mountain permaculture farm near Melbourne, Australia. The site was once an Aboriginal gathering and ritual ground and Pete the Permi Centre has revived that function. Pete introduces students in his permaculture design courses to the fourth ethic of permaculture, care of spirit. Making power towers. This is done after dowsing for the best location and gaining permission from the site. This is in Wuppertal in Germany. in Warburton, Victoria, Australia.
blessing the tower. This is a ceremony we do afterwards, focusing to impart the intentions of the gardener into the power tower energy field. In these sideshows, I've scratched a few surfaces. There's a lot more to it. For more details about geomancy and esoteric gardening, etc., please check out my books, articles, free magazines, DVDs, CDs and courses. This is one of my books, Sensitive Permaculture. And these can all be found at www geomantica.com The Plant Spirit Gardener by Alana Moore and in German, Stone Age Farming. And here are some more titles from Python Press by Alana. All of these books are still available from geomantica.com Thank you again for listening and we hope you'll all enjoy our online gathering on April 22nd 2021 Blessings of the Earth and let's celebrate the Earth every day Blessed be Thank you.